Hey, are you there? It's me, Justin. On this episode of NSFW Show, we're joined by two very, very special guests who know us intimately. Yeah, does that make you uncomfortable? It does us. Coming up on this edition on the NSFW Show. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 162, recorded January 22nd, 2013. Quatros Hermanos. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Fast and easy way to create a high quality website, blog, or online portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts, go to squarespace.com. Use offer code and this is probably you want. And they recently launched a developer program for complete code control. I believe I can fly. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes it go time for NSFW, the new show full of wind, the new sauce for the web, and that's the show that's not only safe for work. Howdy, beautiful people. My name is Brian Brushwood. I'll be your tour guide, uh, sort of like first assistant dishwasher to the captain of the internet. Captain of the internet, of course, is my BFF, Mr. Justin Robert Young. What's going on, JRY? <laughs> um, Brian, uh, we got, we got a, a real, I'll tell you what, if God farted, it would be this show. <laughs> <laughs> well, can we get some kind of like tattoo on our chest that says God farted and thus began SFW and on the ninth day God farted it would be a really uncomfortable fart like God was talking to some really important people in heaven like and then it would just be like lingering like you know those like comically long farts that like have like different registers See, no I, I figure I figure it'd be like a silent but violent thing where it's like he feels excited like because he, much like NSFW, he thought he had success. He's like, ha ha, silent, undetected. And then the early warning signs of just like the unmistakable odor. And he's just like, son of a beeswax. Oh, you want to know what? I think it's, it's, it's a uh, say it loud. I'm stanking. I'm proud. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, fine. But Maybe you had one of those farts that like you fart and it's really loud, but then you can kind of hear like, like a bubble pop kind of sound. No, you know like what it is? It's of... like sometimes you got one loaded in the chamber and it's just got epic written all over it. And so you're like, you chainsaw it, you know, like, and then, and then you realize your social situation and you realize the terrible mismatch, but there's no force. There's no option, but to power through. All right. Real, real true fact. I worked alone in a warehouse for so long that I built in an unfortunate social tick <laughs> where I will do the like the cheek lift. Like like all I'll I'll, I'll do like like a dragon like left cheek up like and and like I'll do that in public like with clients and sure stuff. Like, uh, at, at I'm go so games, used to trying to fart as loud as possible because it made me laugh. Well, yeah, but, well, because when it's just you, it's like, of course, that's what you're gonna do. It's like this is yeah. we. You had to be uh, re-socialized. So uh, this is what we're doing this whole episode, right? <laughs> we're just talking about. By the farts. way, remember last week when we were like, listen, we gotta broaden the audience. We gotta really, we gotta really make this for everybody. <laughs> We need our show to be more appropriate, more more approachable. We need more people to dig what we're up to. And the best way, so Not boom. only did we just go on a solid, uninterrupted three-minute talk about farts, but we also linked it to religion and had a specific uh, deity be the one who's farting. Oh, so and that, then said that we were it, no. that we linked ourselves <laughs> to that God. Uh, um, Brian, listen, we have... Uh, it's really uh, hard for me to not just want to double down on this bit of God farting. You have no go. idea. Let's go. It's like, let's no, go. no, this is a bad idea. Let's go a different direction. How do you direction. think Muhammad farts? Okay, that's just it. It's like, is it the Judeo God? <laughs> or is it or is it the Christian God? Or, I mean, I know they're all technically the same. of Muhammad farting and send but, it in and we're going to show up. All right, man. So um, uh, we got but guests. As, as they said, 
if the fart will not come to Muhammad, <laughs> thanks to Muhammad to the fart. All right, uh, so uh, we got guests. Can we can we reveal mystery guest? Let's reveal. Uh, yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are uh, proud to welcome to the show someone who hasn't been on in in a very very long time. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, live and direct from San Diego, California, it is the one and only brother to Brian Brotherwood. Brush with, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Butter Brother Park. Yeah, that's right. That's What's right. going on, bro? Me. Dude, people totally called it. We didn't fool anyone for the record. <laughs> the moment well. they they heard this much of you, they heard they heard like. Get me, and then instantly in the pre-show, I see it's Jay. It's Jay. It's totally Jay. <laughs> well, we do we do sound alike, brother. <laughs> little little bit. Um, you and know, the cackle what? is hard to mistake. Uh, like, yeah. It is the bro cackle. You and all, well, actually, you you guys, you both have it. There is a distinctive brushwood. It's it's not even just a cackle. It's like a giggle cackle. It, it, it's a gigackle. Uh, you know like, what it is? It's it's we put Y's in our laughter, like uh, like like we're saying Y's and ins. Like most people, it's H A H A. Like we we have Y's and ins, and they're like yeah, 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 that kind of thing. Like we're yeah. saying yeah, yeah, or something. I don't know. Uh, but, but you want to know, Brian? I'm feeling like this is a little. I mean, pardon me. It's both. It's little, not fair, little, man. Little, we always have Jay on. Show. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like if we're gonna have a brother, it's gonna be my brother, right? But the problem is. Uh, I mean, you don't have a brother. You're an only child. <laughs> That's not true, Brian. I have a younger brother. What? Are you? What? Wait, you have a younger brother? In fact, let's bring him on right now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, making his uh, NSFW show debut. It is Eric Young. Holy yeah. cow! Eric, Eric, Eric Young. Yeah. What's with the three name nomenclature here? What's going on, NSW? NSFW. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know the name of the show. Oh, that's great. Bro. It's perfect. So, so far, off to a good start. Yeah, okay. NSFU. NSFU. <laughs> NSF me. NSFU. Okay. So, um, <laughs> gentlemen, yeah, uh, this is a one. very strange confluence. Uh, here, yeah, you can you can angle your your yeah. monitors there. Uh, this is pretty amazing that we got brothers here. And uh, we normally spend at least, I don't want to say we actually plan out NSFW. Like at this point, it's become a dare where we refuse to come up with an idea until more than four hours beforehand. But we do, yeah. it's our ritual to have a panicked phone call about four hours ahead of time and figure out what we want to do. In this case... Brian, Brian, doesn't that describe your entire life? A little bit. Is just pulling out of the ass. <laughs> oh, hold on. Wait a minute. This we're already getting to some revelations here because Jay, I've always been made to feel like I'm the catalyst, like I'm bringing this panic into his life. But really, what you're saying is that he's the common denominator. That everything has he, this series. I tell you, this he does his greatest pad- work when his back is against the wall, and 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 I think he intentionally procrastinates because he'll he knows that he's gonna have that flash of brilliance. Okay, but here's the problem. This is the problem. Like. Like, even as I'm procrastinating, I see the cliff out there, and I'm like, and I'm going to jump out right before it goes over, and it's going to do a tumble roll. It'll be amazing. And then it's like I go to jump, and then and then all of a sudden I'm stuck because Justin's holding my hand down saying, like, a little bit farther, bro. <laughs> we, got, we got time. <laughs> And then, and then it's not till we're like already off the cliff, and he's just like, "I invented a parachute, and here it is. <laughs> Let's go." Yeah, sometimes that happens. Sometimes it's uh, Homer jumping over Springfield Gorge. You never know. <laughs> That's that is exactly true. Well, in this case, we had uh, our traditional panicked meeting, and uh, uh, weirdly, we spent like thirty minutes just talking politics, and then we're like, "Do you want to make? Should we make a?" Uh, and then it was just like, "Nah, we got brothers." We'll just, just wing this one. We got stories. We got the brother's card. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, I've been saving this one up. <laughs> I think we've always, like, I think our, our like, me and Eric and, and you and Jay are similar in that, like, we, we are good friends and, and we talk. When we talk, it is always very, very easy. So it's, like, it's not a weird thing to just have our conversation fill up an entire episode. However, we do have one bit, and Brian, I have a title for it. Okay, go on. Do you have a theme song? Should I play something? Uh, no. Uh, yes, I, I am so. calling from the 1920s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the bit we Thank are you. going to play today is help a brother out. 
<laughs> Help a brother out, of course. You got it. It's two bros, right. no hoes. Here is the bit. Bri or, uh, a Jay and Eric will each offer for you a, a, a as embarrassing of a story as they can think of that f it centers on me and Brian. And then you, the audience, will decide via straw poll who has the most embarrassing story. So really, this is Jay and Eric doing combat where we are the weapons. Yes. Yeah, so uh, who wants to open? You, you want to throw out an, an uh, opening volley? Well, I, I have a question. I, I mean, uh, is this just one story, or can we, like, escalate? Oh, yeah. You know? we, like, well, I, we'll just, let's just see where it goes. Oh, so you're wondering if you want to hold something back. Are You, you want to start oh, yeah. off? No, I want to know no, if I want to hold the stuff to the end. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> Or I guarantee my victory <laughs> because I'm pretty sure I got the goods on you, bro. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Why don't you throw us a softball? Make it short and sweet. Go ahead. Give us something right. 30 seconds uh, long. Brian and I did this uh, church thing in uh, junior high. And uh, on our way back, I don't remember he, this. Uh, fell asleep in the back with a raging heart on. <laughs> For about six hours, and everybody was commenting on it. We all took pictures in front of his, like, we called it Mount Rushmore because it was kind of. <laughs> Wait, not Mount Rushmore? How'd you guys miss I, that? I, I don't know. And, and uh, certainly, he definitely uh, bears the hell out of it. It was pretty good. <laughs> What's funny is, like, oh my God, I did not realize the extent of that, Jay. Like, they showed me the picture, and I oh, was. The and no, oh. <laughs> the extent, the extension of it. I didn't realize how massive Mount Rush, wow. Mount Rushmore, you say? For me. <laughs> uh, I, I did not realize that it was like all six hours long. You guys were talking about it. That's, That's like amazing. something you need to call a doctor about in those commercials. Oh, talk talkies, cars, and we were like, Brian's got a boner back here, <laughs> over and <laughs> break a break a Brian boner. We got a big Woody. <laughs> Break it, break it. This is Bravo eight seven seven. What's going on? Oh my God, Jay, that's why wow, you're not messing around. You can't. You came to play. We Skills told. Cat, Skills Cat is asking you to tweet the pic to find the tweet the pic. Yeah, it's probably around here somewhere. I mean, I think I tore it up. Like I was pretty. I was pretty. I was I pretty know. upset. I, I, I have a couple of middle envelopes that I ran across going through my. By going through my childhood, um, <laughs> and uh, uh, there's some uh, folders that I think are pertinent to that area, and specifically that trip. So I might have a copy of it. All right. Well, but it's at my foot. Brian, Brian, <laughs> I'm gonna describe that out in blackmail time. <laughs> uh, Brian, describe for me in one sentence your feelings upon realizing that people had taken not one. But multiple pictures of your erection. I I I I I don't even know. Is is one of those things where it's like you get so frozen up you don't even know how, what to think really. So, so panic. Was yeah. Panic oh yeah. 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 Like like you think in terms of like because you've seen at this point you you've been in junior high you've been in early high school or whatever you've seen stuff spiral out of control where it's like there's a guy i cannot even remember the guy's real name because he was motion lotion for the entire time because the rumor was at a party he got caught with some vaseline in the uh, in the bathroom and there's another guy named swirly never learned his real name because he was the one who allegedly got his face you know thrown in a, in a, yeah. a dirty toilet and flushed on there and it's like i just think i'm like am i about to be mount brushmore or it's like what because <laughs> no, they missed out on the nickname opportunity Oh, to be honest, to be honest, in my mental Rolodex of of the emotions I felt at that moment, it is shockingly close. Like the the emotion is almost identical to what I used to call the BB Live Show Hangover, where I would get up the next morning and think, "Oh God, what do we do? Did I really simulate teabagging people live on the internet last <laughs> night?" <laughs> and then, so that's uh, that's what I was thinking of. Well, Jesus, Jay, I didn't know you were gonna come come swinging so hard. I feel like there's. I thought that was a softball. I got I got the dirt, brother. Nope. I... Now we we don't have a photo, but we, we do have the hard shaft. We... No softball. I know we got we got we, we got felled by an avalanche from Mount Brushmore. <laughs> well, so so what what do you what do you got? It's like strip mining. Like it was just like, like the whole side of the mountain comes down on you. 
<laughs> we're down at the, the cliff face. So yeah, well, so what do you got? Let's hear, let's hear a, a, a return fire, a softy. After, um, after much deliberation, uh, I've determined that. Uh, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the facts of what we know. Uh, <laughs> in in high in high school, what? Justin dated uh, a girl, um, a, the valedictorian of the school. Go on. Uh, and um, and after wow, that comes dangerously <laughs> close to somebody <laughs> being able to find out who she is. <laughs> is that so? Well, I mean, if you were to figure out when I graduated, which isn't all that hard. Yeah, yeah, See, this is what I love about Justin, is he points out, like, here's something really terrible that might happen. Let me in great detail outline the steps that somebody theoretically I'm gonna could follow. I'm going to blow this bitch's sh**. Oh, you have no idea how satisfying this is to watch Justin twist in the end. <laughs> I mean, he's so... It's amazing. Wait, was that a belt too? Does, does that is it go oh, time? Oh yeah, no, yeah. Oh, Eric, Eric got the belt. Thought the show was called yes. NSW, right? NSW. <laughs> NSW. <laughs> NSW. <laughs> anyway, so what we know about the situation is that Justin dated this chick, and uh, after the relationship was done, uh, the chick was no longer interested in dating dudes. Uh, uh, the the chick had switched teams. Good. So. Uh, I like the way you drop it. Know, allegedly, um, uh, and and uh, races. <laughs> Wait, she's racist now? No, like she, she, she playing just turned her. Totally she changed. Racist. She changed went, her went race. To a black chick. So she's she is now black. She turned into a black chick. <laughs> well, I mean, like she she her her predilections changed. <laughs> she she's right, allegedly her predilections became. <laughs> so that's what we know about the situation. Um, whether or not Justin actually turned this, this chick lesbian is, is still up for debate. Justin actually has a pretty interesting twist on the situation that I'll give you the privilege of telling. What? Come um, on, what's, what's the nip <laughs> twist? The, uh, the, 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 uh, the spin that he's put on it, and I actually got to give him credit for this. <laughs> is, <laughs> so, is that, this is great that this has, is a, oh, go he, he obviously is the pinnacle of male sexual prowess okay well, this, was, <laughs> this was this was my my pr spin at, at the time. <laughs> seeing as justin is the pinnacle of male sexual prowess she had determined in fact that there's no better that this might that she might as well search for she's like <laughs> I, d I did men i did men other genders and races because she's had everything that she could possibly have she's done, like i've done. been there i got the it's yearbook signed from there and then, and then we're out. So let's see, where, where am I going to go from here? Bigger, stronger, tougher? No, can't be done. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, but I think it's pretty clear that Justin turned her into a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, bud. I mean, listen, the facts, the facts are, are fairly clear to anybody. You pulled a Costanza. A... <laughs> pulled a Costanza. She never climbed Mount Brushmore. <laughs> 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 All right, bro. That's some return fire. What do you got? <clears throat> oh, see, this is trouble when Jay's think. In fact, m maybe this is a good time to thank our sponsor, Justin. Do you know who's who's making these episodes possible? Uh, no. So Jay, you think a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> let's just do. Let's play some thinking music for Jay as he figures out. Something Wait, I thought you were like. I thought you had like six in the chamber. I thought you had uh, six in the clip and one in the hole. Jay Schwood about to make some bodies turn cold. <laughs> Oh, you know what? Well, I, I, here, I'll tell you what. I, I do know who this is. This is. Uh, we got we got some friends here. We got some friends who I'm actually talking to. I, I swapped emails with our buddies over at Squarespace today. Because I don't know if you noticed, uh, but as much as I have loved my website at schwid.com, I called them today because I'm going to get switched over to the hot new Sassafras Squarespace 6. And I want to retool it because since, did you realize that four years ago when I first started rocking Squarespace. I loved the massive upgrade and the awesome template, the CSS wizardry that they put together, but it's all about promoting the stage show. And nowadays we host NSFW, award-winning podcast, NSFW, little th a little yep. show called uh, Scam School. And I do a bunch of other stuff. And I realized I got to redo my whole site. And there was a brief moment that I was like, well, do I want to, do I want to make it myself? <laughs> and I suddenly realized at some point, you realize that you've gone too far 
and I'm utterly incapable of even thinking about making my own website right now. And it seems like an offensively stupid idea to do so. So immediately- You wanna want know what that moment is? Yeah. When you're reading through elementary directions about something and you are already lost. <laughs> and it's like, when they're like explaining to you, like if it was like how to make a cabinet and it's like, Get a screwdriver. And you're like, what are these things? <laughs> exactly, right? So uh, in this case, uh, look, and if you don't know, if you're not watching the show, then why don't you just set fire to your face and try to watch the rest of this. If you're still watching with your eyes open by the time your eyelids get melted off, then you can see me giving you this many fingers in your face for telling you to shut up and go to Squarespace. That's actually the international sign language sign for shut your melted face. <laughs> Such your melt face. That, you're going to see that. There will be somebody like like doing like a sign language like kind of thing, and then someone's going to go. I got it. I got it. What is it? Your, your magic of Squarespace has, has made me think of a story. <laughs> All right, hold on, hold on, hold on to, hold on to that story. Let me just let you guys know, because like Brian, I just uh, been working with Squarespace Six JuryTalks.com. It's where the new Jury Podcast live stream is. Uh, you can go over there. So easy to update, so easy to upload. It makes running that element, that site, a, a pleasure. That podcast, uploading it, just so easy. Everything's drag and drop. And I'm actually like, I'm, I'm excited to make time to actually play around with the visual functionality because like Brian said, it's all about creativity. It's not about knowing the technical details of how exactly to do it. Uh, it is so awesome. You have to go over there, check it out, squarespace.com. When you go ahead and check out there, uh, you're gonna get 10% off your first purchase on new accounts. And uh, the offer code is NSFW1. Brian? Juan, <laughs> why are you writing that? <laughs> there, our, <laughs> NSFW1, we got it. And, uh, I think that you should delete that. <laughs> all right, fine. There's that, but it's code. What, did I get the code wrong? It's NSFW1. Oh, no, NSFW1. <laughs> Take it from me, Juan. <laughs> I did a website. I made it on Squarespace. That's why they come to me, NSFW Juan, to make site. I have many, many needs for site, Brian. Many needs for site. I am, what time I need a banana stand. Banana stand Juan. Boom, banana stand Juan, up there on the side. Is this, is this our new spokesman for NSFW? Is this... Oh, Brian. When, when, when NSFW Juan wants a site, he says, uh, Joaquin, I call myself Joaquin. To myself, I call myself Joaquin. You did. You need to make a site, Juan. That's how I do it. I, 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 were you wondering how I did it? I did it on, this, on Squarespace. I don't know why you look at me. You look at me like that. You, you look at Juan like that. You want to fight? You want to? Hey, and, and, hey, and, my friend, what? calm down. Calm and, down. And, we all peace here. Let's have some vodka. We oh, drink together. Hey, the looking, cabron. <laughs> Now that was NSFW one, correct? <laughs> Kill it. Kill it with fire. All right. Thank you very much to our friends over at Squarespace. Uh they got the, their new their new um uh system as well. NSFW or sorry, Squarespace six. I just missed It's like that moment. Hey Brian, what's the offer code? It's NSFW one. Who call me? <laughs> Okay, so uh, what what do you got, Jay? You got a story that's gonna kill me. Uh, well, it involves um, uh, the the D word for uh, phallus. Can for I say phallus? that. Uh, sure. It's somebody's name, Richard. It's Dick. <laughs> yeah. All right. So anyway, all right. So Brian and I are tasked to clean house all day Saturday. My mom is just like. Ah, See, just okay. Like, right, one second, Jay. One second, uh, Justin. Here's yeah. one thing that I didn't even consider is not knowing what stories that they're going to tell in advance. Like, I, I have no idea where this is headed, and I'm just quietly growing horrified. As I like <laughs> how it also is like the preface is the topic is this. <laughs> so let me start the story where me and my brother are alone together. 
All right, take it away, Jay. All right, so my mom, my mom has this like. Oh well, wait, it gets like, sexier. My mom <laughs> freaking up. the mom, of course. Why not? Go for it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, we could we could call her right now if you do. No, god sure damn it, Jay. Fine. Don't don't. Hey, I called my mom on the show, and I made Michael Rooker yell at her. <laughs> All right, well let's see. It may come to that. Where is this headed? All right, so. All right, so. Uh, we have to clean the house top to bottom and, you know, doing a kitchen, like clean everything, move everything out, like maid, maid style cleaning on the house. And maid my mom style. was we like, clean that, in... we clean that as maid style, sucker. <laughs> yeah, dude. Not like, not just like bachelor style. Like, <laughs> yeah, sure. We yeah. wore the dresses and we had the feather dusters and everything. It was a weird day. <laughs> yes, we did. No, we didn't. Okay. Um, so anyway, my mom's like, just, crazy at this point her <laughs> age like like about the fact that we cleaned the place no she's just insane like this <laughs> like there was a brief period bed, that mom was and was... she's just off her rocker and she's like having us do stuff like and just like and you're like oh but oh, i'm supposed you... to do this with my friends and anyway so she like comes in and yells at you no, God. and and you know uh she she goes out back and you turn around and look at me and you say, suck my <laughs> bitch, suck my <laughs> bitch, suck my <laughs> bitch, suck my <laughs> And you sing in this whole song, like, as you're vacuuming, like, you know, and mom walks in behind you and catches you doing this. <laughs> and you turn, you turn white and mom just was like, He's gone from pink to white. <clears throat> Let's just get that out of the way right there. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! Dang it, Jay! You remember that, bro? That yeah. Good time. By the way, uh, 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 Tony, the time code for the beeps is twenty-seven minutes ten seconds in. That's when you want to beep that. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that happened. Uh, uh, Robert uh, underscore says new theme song. <laughs> <laughs> So many things. Maybe you can make He's that a ringtone on the new BrianRushwood.com. <laughs> Maybe that would be the the like. Well, you know how like some of these corporate magicians will have like a puff of smoke and they'll step over and be like, "Hello and welcome to my website." <laughs> I could have I could have like a puff of smokes and then you know like it starts like it's a metal version of it. No, it's, no, it's you as a young fifteen year old Brian Brushwood vacuuming singing that song. And then you unzip yourself and like step out of it. Hi, welcome to my website. I used to be an inappropriate youngster who didn't know when to zip that lip, but now I'm squeaky clean and I'm ready to make your party more exciting than ever. How amazing would it be if you had like a full minute and a half like mandatory website intro video? Oh my god! And there's it's just like a full website tour the entire time, and there's no way to skip. Do it. you know what? What I would be okay with is to create a website that's a total lie. That's every over the tarp, over the top thing, like over the tarp, <laughs> over the tarp. <laughs> because I don't want it on the carpet. <laughs> Keep it over the tarp, you know, mister. Over the tarp. So, it, like, every over-the-top thing where it's, like, uh, you know, sparkles and decorations, and it's, like, I'm wearing sequins, and I'm doing all those uh, those those uh, motivational, cheesy things, and it's, like, like make it all about how it's, like, imagine how you'll look when you're the star of the next corporate holiday party. They'll say, you know, or, or they'll be, like, we can make you be the one who gets cut in half, or your CEO, or it, just every cheesy joke or whatever and then see if we can actually get me booked like as a stunt to do that and then i go do the show yeah like a, a just a regular crappy thing but well you gotta have a gimmick though it has to be like but also it's like but also <laughs> i f your food <laughs> <laughs> also you eat, off, you eat sushi off my chest <laughs> Yes, that's it. Oh my god, dude. Magician and nude sushi model. Male <laughs> nude sushi. Like, everything Done. looks good. And it like I, I just see if we get any letters being like, hey uh, we really were impressed with your site. Uh is there a chance that we could get it without the nude sushi? No. Part? And by the way, and it's like it's gonna be an awesome like you're gonna be like, as you can tell, I take care of my body. <laughs> like, why not show it off? It's delicious. 
I what? keep seeing this in the comment. I'm wondering if uh, Mount Brushmore has already made it into the BBP. I'm guarantee you it's, it's yeah. going to be etched in stone. I know stoners. where we're going to put the donuts. <laughs> it's, it's, it's right <laughs> underneath the file heading of Raging Stoners is, is where Bre Mount Brushmore is. All right, so what, what, what do you got, guys? Um, I guess, the, well, we've got... Um, but all the... This is... We're bringing knives to gunfights here. Like... Uh, Jay is RoboCop, okay. and it's just like, <laughs> and, like all these, this amazing arsenal of weaponry. And Eric's like, how's a Bowie stop. knife? <laughs> like, there's just, there's nothing here. Like, I'm getting weird. <laughs> Jay is like the ED-209. He's just like, bring a story. You have 20 oh, seconds to compile. Like, I can just, the rest of this show, it's all Brian's story. No, no, please, <laughs> please, <Brian> no. <laughs> I, 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 at least give uh, us something right. else. So Eric, there there is another one that Eric came up with. Um, Justin told me about a. Uh, I guess this was when he was in middle school, and um, there was uh, towards the end of the school year. He um, is just looking to the uh, the class that he was in was just looking to kill time towards the end of the year. So he convinces his teacher uh, to let it, uh, let him bring in the Holyfield versus Tyson. Uh, uh, boxing match. That, Wait, um, like, like it was pre it was pre-recorded. It was pre-recorded on VHS tape. Uh, our uncle had recorded it, um, and so anyway, so the teacher says, "Yeah, that's cool. Go ahead and bring in the fight." Wait, and um, apparently, uh, uh, is th is this sounding familiar? No, no. I'm just, I'm well, just no, like, no, like I, I've told this story, but I forget where. But no, 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 I, no, I, I have told it. I, I haven't heard this. I haven't heard this. But I have two questions. First of all, was it was it Uncle Bilbo was the one who recorded it? No, 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 no. Okay. This was another another uncle. Okay, but uh, but the second question, like, did the teacher not know what how auspicious this fight was? No, I believe this is Tyson Onlyfield one, the one that actually just ended regularly and not a man. <laughs> not the bloody cannibalism. okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that would be amazing if she was no, cool no. with that. So this was just a great boxing <laughs> match, and he was like a younger, a younger male teacher, so he was very like predisposed to like, yeah, let, let's watch an awesome boxing match. Like that'll be cool for all the kids. <laughs> I feel like the comments down here have actually come up with a better story, uh, or a better ending to this story <laughs> than the way that it actually ends. They just tell it. Lo and behold, in round seven of the fight, full-blown porn breaks out <laughs> in no! the middle of, of uh, Justin's AV class in middle school, <laughs> and he goes racing up to the front of the classroom. And even though in retrospect it doesn't seem that bad, because you could kind of pull it off as like he he pulled this like killer prank on his teacher. You know. No, are you kidding? I bet. Now, were you horrified or what is it? Why is horrified? <laughs> okay. All right. Now, real quick, real quick. Like, there's different grades here of what we're looking at. So there's there's that issue. Number one is there's some part of you that just wants to like, like uh, if you truly didn't know, should you just be as surprised as everyone else, or do you feel ownership? Like that's my tape. That's my reputation. Yeah, no, it was, it was, I think if, if I remember correctly, like I had had to sell the teacher on it for a little bit and it might have even come to like a vote where like it was like, well, do we watch The Lion King or Tyson Holyfield? Like, <laughs> uh, and so I had like campaigned for it and then like, and it was almost it, 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 in a way that we've lost in, in the digital era. There was like this great analog like transition where like the picture started to like, crackle and flicker and then it fades into not even like hardcore pornography it was like the playboy channel so ah. they like they would do like those like video pictorials or whatever where it was just like trying to the like slow... uh, yeah yeah less and so it was like yeah. it, it might be it, it came in on like a bale of hay <laughs> <laughs> but, but like the moment you saw the soft focus filter you started to get nervous oh. I knew exactly what it was, and it was just like a slow pan up this nubile blonde's like thigh. <laughs> Ken Burns porn. Uh, so yeah, so it, and eventually boob showed up, and like everyone is like, this is the lottery for middle school. Oh like, my god! Wait, this so this is, was middle school? Yeah, this is eighth grade. So like, uh. People are like going bananas, like it's a prison riot. Because meanwhile, like the lights are off. It's like we're all watching a movie, and and then boom, like 
porn shows up and everybody is just like, at least in my mind, it was absolute pandemonium insanity. Bueller throwing <laughs> chairs and I had to run over and ah! <laughs> So, uh, uh, okay, so what's amazing, too, is I can see, like, in eighth grade, you must have felt like a champion of the people getting something as racy as, as full-on violent boxing in the classroom to pass the time. And yeah. so not realizing what a major coup that you were, that you were in for. So how, how did it – where did it go from that? I mean, I think I was so sufficiently panicked and, and, and apologetic and, like uh, – just a complete shambling mess that he had no reason to believe that I had tried to like pull one over on the class or anything. So I just apologized. And it was also the end of the year, which is why we were killing time. So, and, so uh, it just got as far as just a naked, you just saw a naked woman basically, right? A naked, oh yeah. No, it wasn't like, like, oh, put it in my butt or whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> there's there's stories I hear uh, as you hear about like from the um, the crowd that does cruise ships or whatever I can't remember what the, who the magician is, <laughs> but somebody I'm sure somebody out there has heard this story before. But uh, you know the crews on these cruise ships they deal they see different acts coming in all the time. And this guy was just a colossal a hole. Every time that uh, you know he's always chewing out the tech people. And this is back in the age of digital cassettes. And what you would do is, if you were really fancy, you bothered to put all your music on one mixtape that people would advance or whatever. But it was easier and more reliable if you had like eight different routines. You wanted it to always start at the same right part on each tape, so you would yeah. actually have different tapes. You pop it in, uh, so you knew it would start right on cue. And in this case, they took he had like a like an eight minute set, and on the very last day, as they left, they gave him back all his tapes, and on every or on on every one in the middle of it, they had replaced the audio with hardcore pornography music, uh, or hardcore pornography, you know, the sounds of people having sex, yeah. knowing that the next time he went in the middle of some big corporate gig, they were going to totally screw him over. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So there's that. <laughs> uh, I, well, I. I feel like number one. I feel like like Jay, uh, you know. I, I feel like we're the Gap band. Like like you dropped the bomb on me. And you, you tell me it, it, Jay took us to Mount Brushmore. Oh Jesus! <laughs> Sorry, you were uh, saying. <laughs> I'll tell you what. In the context of that story, those uh, items on Mount Brushmore look way too happy. <laughs> they, they they do have big. <laughs> looking at the picture overly enthusiastic grin imagine all right i'm gonna try and dance around this visual go for but it imagine all of those items designed <laughs> for healthy teeth were using their mouths on what that picture is about got it that's best sure. or worst porn ever uh i don't know as long as this guy's in it i'm totally happy <laughs> 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 so a friend of mine was telling me uh he has this dude that he works with that uh used to work in um i forget if it was detroit or, or harlem but a, a very a predominantly black neighborhood and he went to go see robocop when it first came out and he said that the greatest movie theater one-liner when you're walking out and you're listening to other people's conversations about the movies was this black guy's walking out of robocop and spoiler alert for robocop just walks out and says man RoboCop got his name back. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, there was also this uh, <laughs> when I was working at the movie theater, <laughs> we were trying out uh, a bunch of different assistant managers. And it's so tough, you know, when you're a smug high schooler who's about who's college bound or whatever. And you wish that you were making that extra two dollars an hour that an assistant manager would make. And you see these guys who come in who are like, you know, mid 40s who are just washed from, you know, their alcoholism drives them from one job to another or whatever. Uh, and uh, so it's it's hard not to feel a smugness to yourself. But <laughs> one of them came in and they were and uh, commenting on on Jurassic Park, he said, man. Those dinosaurs look real, but I know they ain't real because they didn't have cameras back then. <laughs> <laughs> by, by the way, uh, leading in the straw poll right now in brutal combat is Young's box singing with, four, with three X's. Meanwhile, so suck my duck, bitch. <laughs> 
<laughs> is is in two. So I don't know. It's separated only by one vote. It's a close one. Mm. Wow. And I Dang. can't believe Mount Brushmore isn't even really in there. <laughs> Young I'll lesbians. tell you what, though. Like, I mean, I feel like of all those stories, only the lesbian ones has real repercussions with other human beings. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let me think. Let me go into the vault. I oh, might no. be able to pull something out that no, might no. get Brian arrested. <laughs> no. <laughs> you got something or no? Uh, oh, you know what? I will drop. I'll go ahead and throw this in your face, Jay. Um, Mom and Dad have uh, are getting all of our old VHS uh, videos digitized. And uh, I may have just two weeks ago seen you and me portraying star trek uh in our full episode uh extravaganza uh there are i would love to show any of those tapes and reenact them on the show or any <laughs> yeah. other podcast any other Great. time it's uh, like it's like can, can we do it again right now i've got i remember my lines i it was my no, best no, no, moment no. of my life I, you know uh t- so wait hold on wait you guys <laughs> You guys reenacted a Star Trek episode? Yeah, well, we no, we made up was, our own episode yeah. and and did it, and uh, it was I did a horrible Spock and a horrible uh, Klingon. It's so embarrassing. It's so Brian dumb. was Spock. Yeah, you were Captain Kirk, and uh, you you gave a very impassioned speech when one of our crew members was turned into a pickle. It was it was really something. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Well, people are asking if there's any stories that I can tell about Eric. And, and, and to be honest, I don't really have a whole lot of embarrassing stories about Eric. But there is one photo that I think you need to find. Is, I think is, it's is on it this Facebook. photo? Is this the photo? It's No, it's not that photo. Okay, although right. that photo is pretty amazing. Uh, but uh, there's a photo of Eric, of you in middle school, where it's like you and all the, uh, like all the black kids. <laughs> Wait, so, what? Eric went to a school that was not private, but it was a a select like it was a a how would you describe it? it? Like, like, a, like a magnet school. Basically, there was a um, there was a waiting list for this school um, of kids of all demographics throughout the county. So the way that the school determined who gets in from the waiting list is they were going to make the demographics of the school match that of the county. All right. So <laughs> if there were this percentage of White kids, this percentage. So, are you kids. saying they needed more Jews in the school, and that's how you got in? Uh, <laughs> no, plenty. No, number one, we're from South Florida. Jews come in a plentiful. <laughs> Just flashing that picture. Um, Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean that. I wasn't. I wasn't trying to say anything with with that picture. <laughs> I clicked on the wrong thing. I just like how it's, it's just sort of like sporadically pops up there. Just toss it in. Whatever I think we should, it. from time to time, we should just cut over to it. I think I like the fact that it's got Justin wearing glasses too, which is nice. <laughs> the uh, one connected tongue. So, I, but like from where we lived, it was not a predominantly black area, but because they wanted to go with the demographics of the whole county, there were more black kids at this experimental school than there would be in an average, in, in, if you just randomly had a school that was districted for the area that we lived in, and Eric, being a, a man uh, who is friend to all, uh, regardless of race, color, or creed, uh, was friends with a lot of the black kids and has this awesome picture of Eric as a <clears throat> wiry, <laughs> like, eighth grader. It's like all these, like, so many black kids All these me. kids, like, like just like, I mean, But they're just so accepting of the fact that I'm there. Like, it's just. Now, it's, now are you like, is what makes it funny, like, the fact that you're posturing uh, among these ethnically diverse people? I, I, I don't know. I, we, I mean, maybe Justin sees something else in it. We gotta uh, see if we it. can pull it up yeah. because it's definitely it's it's worth a uh, a look. Let's see. Anyway. I guess that's the only way that we can pay this off. Yeah. We have to show it on the air. Sure, sure. We'll have to make that happen then. Uh, I mean, I think that the, the the humor really lies in the fact that there, when you take a look at this picture, there is something that is clearly wrong about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's there's a serious one of these one of these things are not like the other kind of moment. Right, but then at the same time, like there's no unobvious uh, unobviousness there among the crowd. So okay, so how, what what's the age difference between you guys? Three and a half years. 
Now, How about you guys? Uh, see, we're only 20 months, so we're like a year and a half. And in fact, like I remember getting mad <laughs> whenever Jay had a birthday because that meant for like five whole months, he would only be one year behind me. And I liked it when yeah, I had yeah. a birthday. And I remember relishing in it and being like, yeah, Brian and I are close to the same age. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. It was and I'm like, gross. Stupid, petty stuff. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, um, now it's... And I, you know, I was actually going to ask that earlier because it seems like the advantage of what you guys have in these embarrassing stories is that, like, you guys were doing, like, the same things at the same time yeah. due to the closeness and age. Yeah. And that's really when the embarrassing stuff comes out. It's, you know, well, it, vacuuming yeah. in the living room together. I was only together, two years same. behind him in high school. Yeah. And, like, and so every teacher, they'd be like, oh, you're Brian's brother. And, like, <laughs> and like I had to meet this lofty expectation of, Pulling it out of my ass at the last second like he does. <laughs> like your, your brother could fit a lot of stuff in his ass. <laughs> and he could pull it out always oh, at the last there minute. We go. <laughs> Wait, we did you find it. the picture? We have it. All right. Oh my god, it's even funnier than I remember it. <laughs> Send it over to me over Skype. Let's see it. We gotta see it. This that. is amazing. I don't know if I can Can you if you can you just drag it over? Or you could just email I'll it to say me. Say this. I'll, I'll say this now. It was posted by somebody who has changed their uh, picture to that of our president Barack Obama. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Oh, you found it on Pace on Facebook? Yeah. I'm so Barack Obama took that picture. Barack. So you're saying Barack Obama had the picture, and now finally we can <laughs> reveal Barack Obama's <laughs> photo of your brother. How are you going to get it to me? Ah. Uh, I'm going to try and share it through Sketch. So, uh, yeah, man. So, Jay, I, I guess, I don't know. It's uh, dry, Growing up, I'll tell you what. Because you and I, Jay, were so close together and we fought so hard, that is directly the reason that Bonnie and I refuse to have kids close to each other. Not that... Really? Because, well, you and I now are total besties and it's awesome to be so close in age, but we freaking tortured our parents so much that it was like there's i don't want to be i don't want to deal with that yeah in a way that's that's a that's a valid point but you know also it's like you know you and i went through the trenches together i mean like i you would beat me up every time i played a bit video game better than you and then i would both you know i tell you also like being shipped off to norway for two years really put us to get close together because you know there there wasn't a lot of american population and then moving back and Stone Temple Pilots and God and the universe. In <laughs> the Bible. Oh, that's it, the Mr. Show, because life is precious. Yeah. And God in the Bible. Is precious. Uh, Justin, it's not this photo, right? That's not the one? No, it is not that one. All right, I just want to make I just sure. send it to you over. <laughs> All right, here we go. Loading it up right now. Oh, yes, dude, this is a great one. <laughs> Hang on, let me get everything all centered in here. You look pretty. You look happy to be there. I was. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. See, that's not even as bad as you make it out to be. I think there's something very, very funny about it. Just because also he looks eight. Like he doesn't. He looks too young <laughs> yeah, to be. He looks situation. very awkward in this photo. Like he's like, I think I know how to smile. Like. <laughs> I think I know how to smile. It's like, Maybe blending in. It's probably better if we get a look at the adult version and then and then you know very very so. <laughs> yeah, you can smile. <laughs> oh my god! The moment you did the face, that was amazing because it's like I look over. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's Imagine pretty a fubu good. hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Nicely done, sir. Oh my god! That's awesome. So, did you guys move around a lot when you were kids? Uh, well, I moved around probably more than Eric did. Uh, I I was born in Texas, moved to Orlando, and then from Orlando to San Diego, and then San Diego to South Florida. But like, Eric, Eric did Orlando to San Diego, and then San Diego back to South Florida. Uh, but then we pretty much once we got to South Florida, we were there for. Did, did you guys fight at all? Because like I was saying, Jay and I were brutal. Like I was mad. I was mad. When when Jay's bedtime got moved to eight thirty, because eight thirty was my bedtime, and I had to wait a whole year before I got it, and he can't have it because when I was his age, I couldn't go to bed at eight thirty. I would actually uh, characterize our childhood um, rivalry as Justin ruthlessly beating the. Sh 
Nay. Me too. Like All right. uh, <laughs> belt. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, yeah, there was a lot of, uh, oh, we, we staged, uh, and by we, I mean, I, I uh, conscripted Eric into staging uh, elaborate uh, wrestling pay-per-view cards. What do you uh, mean? So, so I would like, we, I, would, I would make up all these wrestling characters, and then I would kind of make Eric uh, uh, kind of take, the, take one of them, and then we would <laughs> like stage professional, professional wrestling matches. That's awesome. I think one of the nastiest things I ever did to Jay, and it was premeditated. It's like there was no excuse for it. Because you know how it's like you get – okay, the earliest one of these I remember is uh, remembering like I must have been, I guess, five years old. Uh, yeah, about five years old. And mom, when we would fight in the car, she would tell us to sit on our hands. And like being a, a scientist, I thought I have an experiment here. So it's like I intentionally – just started pushing Jay, like, let's do the thing where she tells me to sit on the hands. And so I started pushing, and Jay's like, ah, rah, rah. and mom, sure enough, says, you know, sit on your hands, right? And so then I'm like, all right, now begins the experiment. And then I just, you know, <laughs> pull on, start <laughs> kicking him, you know, to see, her. she's like, you know, cross your feet. I was like, I was like, all right, so phase two complete. And in my five year old brain, I just start. <laughs> <laughs> hitting Jay with, <laughs> with my head and, and... Uh, and I remember it was definitely mutual I, I believe we were we were a bit older like than yeah, well, five yeah. And three <laughs> it must have been it must have been because because you were wise to it and there was there was sort of like you figured it out as well but yeah uh like likewise I think I think the other thing I did was uh I went like Jay went to the bathroom and, uh, and again, I hatched a plan in my mind. Unmitigated. There's no excuse for this. I'm a genuinely terrible brother. So Jay goes to the bathroom. While he's in the bathroom, I t there's a bunch of saltines on a tray. And I take every other one and lick them. <laughs> and, then, and then I put it back. And then when Jay comes back, I was like, hey, bro, uh, instead of us just eating saltines all willy-nilly, why don't we have a system where I'll take one and then you can take one? You were doing <laughs> magic back then. Jerk. <laughs> it's not even a magic trick. It's just being an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. All right. This is something that I really, really worst they done to you in my entire life. You what? And that was, I was so mad because you hogged the Apple IIe when we lived on Hoyt Street. Yeah. Like, and we had this director's chair, which, you know, oh, director's <laughs> chair, wooden frame. <laughs> And a canvas under thing. Brian gets up and he's like, don't play my game. I'm playing and Ultima I'm, 3 Exodus. Like, oh, I'm about to meet Lord British in the game. Playing summer games. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, and so he runs to get something to drink or something. So I take a sewing needle, a pin, <laughs> and I shove it up underneath the seat. Just the like back. you've seen on television, right? It'll yeah. be a merry prank. And Brian comes walking in. He's like... And then he goes, Hah! and he like jumps down and just flop just right in the needle gets up screaming. <laughs> and I just felt like, so, and I'm like, I don't know how it happened. You know, like, <laughs> like a coward. Denial. Dude, the worst thing I did, and I'm convinced to this day, this is why you shave your head bald, Jay, is because uh, this is now there's no excuse. We're into high school and I hatch a plan. And so uh, we're hanging out at uh, in, in the swimming pool, just so we could start. Maybe I, maybe I, maybe I filed this one away for some time, but it's like we start, you know, as as teenagers do, start pushing or getting ready to fight or whatever. But then I intentionally walk over, grab your hair, and yank it just so you'll go ah. And then when your mouth is going ah, I go and spit into your what? open mouth. <laughs> Oh, it was the worst. <laughs> Do you understand how common that is in a certain segment of gay erotica? I I, I don't, but uh, but I just it's knew it would be love. freaking hardcore. All right, number one, I think in terms of being mean to Eric, like th there really is only one thing that I remember where Eric got hurt because of it, uh, and that was we were riding bikes. Uh, we we're riding back past Hollywood Hills Elementary, right. and you were wearing a black hat, and I wanted to wear his black hat. I wanted the <laughs> hat, 
So I rode up and I kept trying to grab it off his head and he kept like trying to like swat my hand and everything. And so then I just decided to just go for broke and just run right into him <laughs> and grab his head off his head and then send him flying into a chain link fence <laughs> and off his bike and skidding onto the ground. Now, okay, now when you did this, this is just like me want hat, me no care about uh, uh, repercussions. Like, well, I got the hat, didn't I? I mean, like, do you think you would keep the hat afterwards? I think I, I thought I was being far more artful about it <laughs> like i was going to like it, it was as if i would it would be like eric would just be like where'd the hat go <laughs> and instead it left him with like road rash on his yeah. knees and elbows well that's the problem Although, right there, there is one thing that to this day eric scarred me with do you remember trying to make scrambled eggs in san diego Oh, yeah. No, that wasn't even in San Diego. That was in Hollywood, Florida. Was it? Oh, yeah. That, okay. was, that was recently. <laughs> so, well, not recently. So Eric was very young and tried to make scrambled eggs. But, like, he must have left them on for, like, five seconds. Like, because when he gives them to me, they're basically still yolk. <laughs> they're all running and everything. Sure. They're just running. They're just disgusting. This is before my, our mom even gets up. For, for whatever reason. No, no, no. I, th I think that it was actually, it, it was mom's fault because it started out as like, I was too young to be operating a stove at that yeah. point anyway. Like that, <laughs> it was poor parental judgment. But wow, this, how did this <laughs> turn into just crab on ma? <laughs> is, this what, uh, is this what it looked like when uh, Justin Robert Young was young? Uh... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Um. But anyway, no, I mean, there was no, I mean, looking back on it now, that was, it was ridiculous that, you know, I was, I was even making breakfast in the first place and I was put in charge of something, you know, with heat. Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah, I, I, I did not cook these eggs long at all. So, uh, so I eat, for some reason, I, mean, I, I, in this part of retelling the story, I don't know why I, I didn't look at him and be like, this is gross. I'm just like, oh, this is a new way to make scrambled eggs. <laughs> So I eat them, and I'm like, I'm, I'm close to throwing up, and it's just disgusting. And to this day, I, I don't eat scrambled eggs. Like, I have this, like, block about eating any kind of scrambled eggs because Eric made them crappy one time when I was, like, eight. Dude, do you and realize that I full-on, like, you're t the more you're talking about scrambled eggs, the more my mouth is watering uh, because, like, I'm on a crazy scrambled egg omelet. Like, for some reason... 36 hours ago, I figured out that you could make an omelet and pour soy sauce on it, and it was like the best thing I'd ever made. I've made it three times since then. Like, that's how good scrambled eggs are. Oh my God. No, I, I, I and like, so now Ashley makes these like uh, vegan fake eggs, like scrambled eggs thing. And like, I, when she would make it for me and I wouldn't like it, I'm like, I, this I, it's not that I don't like this. Like this tastes fine. <laughs> it just looks like scrambled eggs, and I have a problem with that. <laughs> so listen to this. There's actually, there's a follow-up story to all of this. Okay. Because just recently, I've realized that Justin was so traumatized by the scrambled eggs incident that it actually carried over into my adult life as well. I was making eggs recently, scrambled eggs for my girlfriend, and I didn't even realize that. Every single time I, I was making scrambled eggs from the, that point forward, I would always like ma make a point to like overcook them. Yeah, they're like, 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 my like scrambled the eggs, eggs have like hash marks. They have to be black. Them, you know? They have to be black. Eggs have to be black. Yeah, yeah. Only, and only like, black I'm eggs like, are I good eggs. Just, like, I'm like, hey, babe, like, check out these scrambled eggs. They got the grill marks on them and everything, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and like eventually, after like five or six times of me scr making scrambled eggs, she's like, puts the fork down. She's like, why do you why do you overcook the eggs? <laughs> why why are you making rubber for me to chew on? <laughs> they have to be crunchy like hash browns, right? And then then and kind of soft and squishy tears. on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> it was a breakthrough. It was such a beautiful moment. <laughs> it's like it's like the like, the fork the, the fork falls down. Is just like my brother is a dick. <laughs> All right. So real quick. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that guy looks <laughs> All right. cool. So, so uh, as as we're wrapping up here on the show, there's one thing that we gotta that we gotta go over. So, on the uh, Billboard charting comedy album Night Attack, I tell a story about <clears throat> how I was fatter as a kid, and Ron used to make fun of me 
for being fat. A little tubby. So people are asking in the chat room, for the record, how fat was I? How would you describe the fatness of a young Justin Robert Young? I mean, I don't know. What do we need, like a fat child celebrity for comparison? Yeah, yeah. If you, if you were to, to, to like, I'm, I wasn't, like, heavyweights big. No, no. But who was, like, the chubby kid on Salute Your Shorts? <laughs> <laughs> because That's Donkey Lips. <laughs> what kind of we're, show was that? I mean, <laughs> donkey Lips. A little less than Jay and I just a little bit like, yeah, what? <laughs> Salute your shorts, what? Fuck yeah. you, looks fat. <laughs> sure, but that wasn't a pretend back game back. that you guys played. <laughs> like, Either you salute your right shorts now. or donkey lips. Either of those could be pretend games. One of that show had a rat tail. <laughs> you weren't allowed on that show without a rat tail. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, let's do the. Oh, uh, people! By the way, they somebody sent in a Photoshop of young Justin, so we got to show the Photoshop of uh, of young Brian, and this is accurate. This is one hundred percent true of how I looked. <laughs> That's me. In fact, you can see I'm in the middle of singing. Sh <laughs> uh, dude, this is like. Yeah, we... you'll never catch me here, see? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, what are you gonna do? Get get the schwudzy? No, you can't catch the schwudz. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, dude, anything else? Oh, uh, we do have some business. First of all, a friend of the show, uh, Ali Spagnola, has won her court case, has launched an Indiegogo campaign. Oh, if, hell yeah. If you go to, uh, I believe, Indiegogo.com slash Power Hour. I don't know if it's capital P, capital H or not, but uh, just look for Power Hour out there. Uh, throw her some support. She's got um, $30,000 of legal bills to recoup. And she wants a uh, ten thousand on top to launch this nationwide tour. You get to make a, a vote to bring the power hour to your hometown. That was one of the big, the the, the only downside to having her epic uh, performances at the NSFW live events where the people who couldn't be there this is an excuse to bring her to your show. You could join her yeah, street team. Uh, let me let me just say this about the Alex Bagnola thing. When we brought her out to to Austin, it was amazing. And then we were thinking like, ah, oh, I don't know. Well, well, let's book her for. Uh, Dragon Con, and we'll have her come down. It'll be cool. It's like, I don't know. Do we want to do a power hour again? We were kind of like on the fence. It was like the same thing we did at South by. It was awesome. I Dude. could not imagine it being better. And I'll it do it again tomorrow. Not the most fun thing ever. I'll, I'll do it again the next event. If, if I'll, absolutely, if, like, it does Alley not get play, old. We 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 want to be in the Alex Spagnola business. So do yourself a favor. Go on over. What what's the easiest link to that? Do we have uh, Indiegogo.com slash Power Hour, capital P, capital H. Yeah, no. So so check that out. Uh, you know, her coming around the country is really awesome. She just quit her gig uh, with. Uh, I know she was working with with Google or Android to do the music thing full time. And by the way, go and read the the long form story, the Odyssey. Oh my God, it's brutal. It is awesome and amazing this dude that she defeated is mind-blowing insane ridiculous. he's crazy he's insane you might think that her like in that video she's like calling him like she's being very clever and witty and everything and calling him like an ass hat and stuff uh that does not do justice the kind of cartoon character that this human well, being and, is. and just how far he takes it as well with these transparent bids thinking like, to be honest it's like a real life wily e. coyote with just the most ridiculous traps that he hopes that she'll find the bird seed in it's it's ridiculous well and and i'll just say at the end of that post just blew my mind I'm just like, this dude isn't real. He's a sociopath. He's just a ridiculous human. <laughs> well, and, and people also say, like, well, how come she doesn't get uh, damages for, you know, her legal fees or whatever? And the way it works is because it's a tri trademark violation. She's not – he should not have been awarded the trademark, uh, but he did get awarded the trademark. to something that's very common. And the only way for her to fight it was that she had to sue him. She had to he, challenge – yeah, right, she was the, the instigator mm -hmm. of the lawsuit to break his – iron like spindly claws uh, <laughs> on the, the term power hour, which like literally the fact that she mortgaged her financial well-being um, to to fight for such a cool and awesome thing that now anybody can sell a power hour. It's not like now Allie owns power hour. It's like it's not like like she finally broke Gollum's 
hold on the ring. And now she's like, yes, it is me. <laughs> I'm Allie, the Power Hour girl. She emancipated the she Power Hour. Eman- yes. Like it's free slave. for everyone. <laughs> emancipated. <laughs> well, and, and that's the weird part, because, like, she had to spend all that money out of pocket. And now, like, if you want to launch Justin's Power Hour, you benefit from her, you know, yourself. throwing this money out there, right? So she's like the Harriet Tubman of Power Hour. She is. She <laughs> led the underground drunk road. In fact, just say, just say, just say, good and, job, and Harriet. The underground drunk drive from Alice <laughs> Spagnola. Uh, other thing is, fingers crossed, I think we made it through this whole episode without the, the internet crashing or the, I, I'm saying it, it's going to screw it. The internet didn't crash during the episode. The recording seems to be good locally. Uh, this may be, fingers crossed, shut up. Did Jay just vanish? He's messing with me. No, I think Jay, did Jay just hang up? I, I, I hope it's a joke. I swear, dude, Jay's calling right now. Is it, okay, wait, 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 wait. Oh my God. I think it, okay, <laughs> whatever. The point is. Just power through, power through. <laughs> the point is. So everything's going to fall around me. Listen, even if it's a lie, we fight on that lie. The, the, <laughs> the, the full, uh, this is possibly the last single system solution of broadcasting this show uh two years ago you guys blew my mind by throwing donations enough for us to build night attack uh which has just been phenomenal and done so much for us uh we have increasingly added little bits and pieces uh we got the new cameras uh and and that has created some challenges where uh where we can't keep up we're in this position where we're having you know what we want are these high definition high quality broadcasts to come out of this studio and we can't do it with the current system uh as i am wont to do when i when i wish something better than when i wish for something insane i just loudly complain on the internet and it always works unless you're time warner cable in which case there's clearly no way <laughs> that that yeah. anyone could do anything to fix it but uh in this case uh, I just put it out there, and uh, son of a bitch, if if the the badasses over at Doghouse uh, Systems up in Dallas just say, uh, "What do you need? What's it gonna take? What are you looking at?" And I was like, "Well, I need a new system. Uh, like, do you need a monitor?" I was like, "No, I got monitors. I got keyboards. I got mouse. I got everything. Here, here's what Vid Blaster cares about. Here's all these things or whatever." And they and they put together. They're like, uh, "Why don't we? Why don't we put together a sponsorship thing?" So they are tomorrow. Tomorrow. The Max Troll Box arrives. This thing is in a case that's got these beveled edges and white. It looks like a, a Portal 2 turret. It's awesome. On the side, it's got custom art put together by Tom Z in the chat room of a big old uh, uh, Max Troll Bot face with flames coming out the eyes and everything. It's labeled Max Troll Box underneath. They're setting up. We're going to. Fingers crossed, we'll find out. We're going to try tomorrow. If you want to tune into the live stream, we're going to see if we can uh, get a 720p feed, or at the very least, we'll have functioning transmissions, which will be amazing. And yes, I will live stream the installation in the studio tomorrow, uh, up until 6 p.m. when we have company. Uh, and uh, best of all, the folks over at Doghouse are setting up a promotional code SHWOOD, S H W O O D. And you will be able to uh, get the custom art free, which is normally $100. And uh, we're still working on the exact package, but uh, I'll send you a scam pack, all of my books digitally for free. It'll be $100 of, of loot from scamstuff.com that we will send out to you guys. Oh, it was, sorry, Tom Z. It was not Tom Z. It was Code Monkey X. Sorry about that. I think Code Monkey X's real name might be Tom. Uh, but uh, at any rate, so. Tom Z said, I did it all by myself. <laughs> So we'll see. We'll see about it. And uh, with uh, cross fingers, we're going to see. Also, Chinbeard is doing a doghouse giveaway where uh, if you use code, uh, promo code Kerrigan as well, I believe they stack. But uh, 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 Bill Duran is making Kerrigan's custom gun from Star, uh, StarCraft 2. It's going to look amazing. They're going to give it away, random drawing to anyone who uses the code uh, Kerrigan. But look. Thank you to Doghouse Systems for saving the day. It's amazing. Uh, let me ask Jay why he hung it. Did you hang up, Jay? Was that just being funny? Oh, oh he says no. <laughs> Keep going. No, my, Keep going. My computer, like, gotta, my gotta my computer like shut off and rebooted. It was crazy. <laughs> so it was your I, computer that rebooted. That was amazing. I don't know what happened, but uh, I'm back. Yeah, <laughs> with How's the vengeance. Oh, you guys? and everything's, everything's gone herky-jerky now because you're back. 
This is. I feel okay. like. Okay. Well, if I'm make, if I'm causing the herky jerkies, then I'll skirty skirt. So you'll skirty, skirty flirty. All right. No, oh, everything's good. There? We're good. Everything's fine. Yeah. Everything's fine. Um. All right. Being very uh, uh, quick. Other things. Uh, chat realm podcast awards. Uh, uh chat realm dot us slash awards. Uh, you can get all your all your votes in. We were talking about why we didn't win an award. Chat Realm said, screw other awards. We do our own awards. You know what? We need to blow this up on our social media and make people think it's a real thing. The Chat Realm. Yeah, you because know, Chat Realm could be a generic term. People might think it's a generic term. Uh, okay. It ain't. All it right. Ain't. There we go. Let's just treat it like it's it's an esteemed organization. A very big deal that the Chat Realm awards. It's chatrealm.us slash awards. And I believe... There is one more thing that uh, oh, I'm looking for a link for the uh, for the NSFW movie draft, the movie draft minute in the chat. You I'm know, sure all right, Brian, let me let me pitch something to you. Go for it. I feel like like let's never do this again. <laughs> the, movie, the movie draft might deserve it might be time for us to let the movie draft move into its own apartment. You ma- make it like its own the- separate thing. I feel like the movie draft could like there's we've talked about it so much that it could be its own like show where like each week while like the draft is going on like we talk about it and we just get other people excited in it and we just like build <laughs> this now the, okay the, the so, idea so here, of here's the thing I game. agree a hundred percent however here's the one downside is that in order to do this. We have to fundamentally stop playing it the way we have to come up with a new game that has the same name. It will be a different game. We will stop playing our current game. We will come up with a different game that has different rules and different ways to play and different plays, ways to win in order to structurally make it something that could stand on its own. And then that's the part that gives me pause. That's difficult Wait, for why? me. Why? Well, because because if you want I mean, to really, I'm just I'm just saying like we take this time that we normally like talk for five seconds at the end of the podcast yeah and just have another show where we just talk more about it oh well then that's awesome i thought you were saying because we have talked about making its own website thing where people oh yeah no i still think that that's, that's the future the okay. future of it is sure. basically us playing the exact same game but also letting other people play sure. the exact same game that we're playing yes we can have uh, different leagues not the, not the the play at home version that we have now uh, where people are are building their own thing on preset prices. No, uh, I'm okay. just saying that we can talk about it more. Good. That's all. I'm yeah. All right. Well, I'm I'm with you on that. All right. Let's take a look at the final movie draft. I wonder how it Welcome all turned out. Welcome to your final movie draft minute for the 2012-2013 winter season. I'm your host, Roberto Viegas. We finally come to the end, and man, did it come down to the wire. Though this was close, in the end, only one person is going to win. Here is your final winter 2012-2013 season standings. Sarah Lane finishes in 6th place with $365 million. Justin Robert Young finishes in 5th place with $424.9 million. Padre Robert Balasar finishes in 4th place with $451.2 million. Tom Merritt finishes in 3rd place with $458.7 million. Scott Johnson finishes in 2nd place with $486.1 million. And in 1st place... The winner of the winter 2012-2013 season with $490.7 million, it's Brian Brushwood. And that is your final Movie Draft Minute for the winter 2012-2013 season. This is Roberto Villegas reminding you that in the end, it's Hollywood that wins. See you next season. Yeah, sorry, big, but this time Brushwood's won. Big, big thanks to Blender MF for the video on all of those updates. And, of course, to Vincent404 for the audio and all of those. I love that you guys put together those packages, and it's always easy to throw them in. Uh, dude, this is, a, this is a good season. This is pretty amazing. No, Brian, the, the first ever king of all seasons, Brian Brushwood, who would have known? That the man, the man once regarded as the April Fool, uh, becomes the first guy to do it both ways, summer and winter. You are truly uh, the the greatest champion that this movie draft has ever has for ever the done. moment. Here, I gotta just real quick, just a little bit of that. There, there's that. Okay, that's my entire coronation. Uh, man, it's and what's great. Uh, I'm already, I'm already looking at the summer. <laughs> like, like now this is done. You have no idea. No, I'm all in. <laughs> 
as soon as as soon as I realized that I wasn't winning, and as, I just focused on two things. Number one, like the Zabruder film, going back to the draft episode and watching the moment. <laughs> That I didn't this is not even an exaggeration. Like, no lie. It's like I call or I call Justin and, and he's like, hey, what's going on? I was like, hey, man, what's, what are you up to? He's like, re-watching the movie draft episode. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. You can hear me almost, almost bid a little higher on Skyfall. Son of a bitch. It's like, it's like the vitriol and the frustration. Oh, yeah. No, I was over. I was at, I was in Ohio at Ashley's place and we're like figuring out how to move her out and everything. And it's like all this stuff that's going on. And literally I'm just like watching like my own, like back and to the left, <laughs> back to the left. It's like, like I'm just, I'm just cursing at my, I'm just yelling and just like just such venom to myself. On okay, screen. Now, now is this, is this you beat? I am assuming this is all you beating yourself up because oh, you yeah. would not harbor any ill will to uh, Scott. Josh oh, no, 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 no. It's just me, me, me yelling at myself because I'm, I, and I'm, I'm doing all the math and I'm like, yeah, I could have just bid everything I had and people would have wanted to save money for things after that. So uh, uh, do, do, uh, I feel like we should do some kind of gesture to, to Tom, uh, to Tom, to, to <laughs> Scott, because Scott, like, was that close? It was. I talked to Scott this morning on on the morning stream. How's he feel? Uh, How's he taking it? You know, he's Scott, so he's the nicest person on the planet. So uh, <laughs> he really was also. He didn't know when it ended. He's like, "How many more days do I have?" And I'm like, "Got it, over. And the worst part is, is if he did have more, then it, he might have crossed over because it's like Lemiz no, is still gaining. You. Yeah, like he will cross over your time and. And like, that's, but that's just that's just the danger of picking something so well, late in the draft is that like if you pick something on the last week it only has four weeks you know if he would have had as many weeks with Le Miz as you had let's say for Lincoln yeah and he wins but again that's the strategy right and that, and like this is a point of contention is what is the end point and and it was discussed so heavily beforehand it's like we can't change it after it's like it was decided these are the rules. So it shall we've always, be. We've always played four weeks, four yeah. weeks after the final thing. So you know you're getting a, a discounted thing, which is why you want to spend some of your money early. But uh, yeah, in general, the big, you know, in, in hindsight, Lincoln overperformed, and that basically won you the draft once Les Mis uh, did bigger uh, than it was probably expected to. But to be honest, Skyfall, it, it, it was, to me, this was more about Skyfall being the number one movie of the summer and overperforming and making it close uh, with, with, with Scott. Okay, let me, let me throw this out there. This is me um, spitballing ideas live on the air, which is always a bad idea. What if we split divisions this next summer and we had two divisions where movies go for different amounts in each division? But I mean, listen. So we have six this, players this, in one division. This is my ultimate dream. Yeah. My ultimate dream is to have – software where we can have everybody make their own rules yeah for for the draft because i still would love to do an international draft yes oh you know what why don't we do that why don't we we could have different ones we could have international and domestic well but like that's the thing is like i i feel like we have to play our like now we're in a keeper league <clears throat> yeah like we're in we're in a league where we have the rules we have a domestic uh, Everyone yeah. clearly enjoys it. Everyone, you know, gets gets fired up about it. I'm just trying to think of like who you know, we're gonna. People, people are saying HSX. I used to play HSX when I was a kid. That got boring. Yeah. Like the idea of of it being a stock and trading it. Like that's the wrong metaphor. Fantasy sports is the perfect metaphor for these for this game. Yep. Uh, it is so awesome, and uh, I love it. I and this summer, a lot of big ins this summer. A lot of big moves. Yeah, man. Uh, oof. Okay. Anyway, this is this is gonna be a good one. We'll, this we'll talk is why about it. it can be a dumb podcast. Do you think? Because none of us want to stop talking. You're, about you're it. right. You're right. You're totally right. Uh, all right, man. Well, I guess that's it for this episode of NSFW. Thank you to uh, fabulous sponsors over at Squarespace. Thank you to Doghouse Systems for saving the day. Thank you to Justin Robert Young and his brother Eric. Thank you to the Butter Brother. Go you got anything you want to plug, Joe? Uh, uh, you know, I just want to say if I crossed any lines with any of the stories, I completely apologize. But, yeah. you know, yeah. them's the breaks. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love how punk Jay is about it. <laughs> them's the break, bitch. <laughs> them's the break, bitch. Uh, what you get? What you plug? <laughs> Eric's trying to learn how to do Twitter. 
What's your Twitter? Uh, at Padre Bacon 68 actually, or it's Louis Prophecy. Uh, <laughs> okay, so it's at Padre Bacon Agency or Odyssey. No, Padre Bacon 68. Well, it was my name at Padre Bacon 68. But then I changed. I changed that what because. You, all right. No, wait. Wait. That's not how Twitter works. What is no, happening? That's not how Twitter works. Jesus, Eric. <laughs> what is? By it? the way, I'll just point out. Eric also just figured out how to use his uh, uh, voicemail, like <laughs> this year. You better hurry. We got. We got ten seconds. What is it? Uh, Padre Bacon sixty eight. Padre it. Bacon sixty eight. That's it. You know what that's close to. What? Padre Trafe 68. Line of fire. See you next Tuesday. <laughs> These are your real brothers, Jay. <laughs> you? And uh, is that Louis C.K. and uh, Jim Craver? Yeah. All right. Good. I got one to make me laugh. I got one to make me money. Done. <laughs> Let's move on. I could ditch you, bro. He's one of my new, one of my new bros. Sorry. Can you do it as Senior Brushwood? Yes. <laughs> or Mr. Brushwood? <laughs> this, is, <clears throat> this is NSFW episode 162, recorded on January. <laughs> <laughs> that was the softest jet I've ever Mr. heard. Mr. Brushwood. Juan <laughs> Juan oh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Recorded on Unario 22nd, 2013. Cuatro hermanos. I got that <laughs> hey, on this episode of NSFW, we have a couple special guests. And they're probably. <laughs> <laughs>